Welcome back. In um, this video, we're asked to write a um, class called Point3D that extends the class um, Point, which um, contains 2D coordinates. So if we look at um, our Point class here, we see that we have um, an initial constructor that sets the points to zero, uh, sets the x and y, sets location, gets the x coordinate, gets the y coordinate, uh, prints out a two string in the standard uh, parentheses, value of x, comma, space, um, y, and parentheses, so forth. And then it has um, a formula called double distance uh, from the origin. What that does that doesn't actually mean we're going to double the distance. It just means we're going to return a type double from the origin, which is zero zero to um, the square root of uh, x squared plus y squared. Okay, so our class 3D is going to construct a point um, 0 0 0 then it'll start initializing the point to the given x y and z values then it'll set the location of the x y and z then we'll have a method called get z but we actually will need to change some of the behaviors from the point class and what we'll need to do is we'll need to say the set location is going to um, is called the 3D's point x, y method should be set specified and the z should be set to zero. Okay, which basically means in our set location here, we're going to call upon the super set location and then we're going to plug in a zero for the z value. Um, okay, so when a 3D point is printed into string, it should be in the x, y, and z, so we're going to have to modify that to string. A 3D's point method from the origin is going to be a little different. It's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared instead of x squared plus y squared. So we're going to change that a little bit. And we're going to, last but not least, allow our point 3D object to be comparable um, to other 3D objects. So let's get started with the code here. So first things first. Uh, let's start off with the public class header. Public class um, point 3D. Um, it's going to extend our um, point class and it's going to implement um, the comparable interface of uh, type point 3D. Close that off there. All right. Let's get started. So we're only going to keep track of one field in this uh, class, and that's going to be the integer z, because we're going to be adding a z coordinate. So the first method was to construct an, um, a 3D point with the values 0, 0, and 0. So public point 3D, um, it's not going to take any parameters. So we're just going to set this to 0, 0, and 0. All right, moving on, the second constructor was going to say, okay, we're going to have point 3D, but we're going to take in an integer x, an integer y, and an integer z. And um, the way we're going to do this, the way we're actually going to get these values is we're going to have to call upon um, basically the super with x and y and then we're going to get the z by declaring this dot z is equal to z. Um, the shorthand way of doing this is by just saying, okay, we're going to set the location of this new point to be equivalent to x, y, and z. We're going to pass in those parameters. And you guys will see how this will work when we actually construct our uh, set location method here. So I'm going to move on to the set location going to take in the parameters int x and int y. Remember, we're modifying, we're changing the set location from the original class. And um, as you can see, the set location only takes int x and int y. But um, we want to consider this. The two parameter version of set location will add the uh, z coordinate and set it to zero. So this dot z will be initialized to zero. Um, how are we going to do this? We're going to just call upon the set location method. We're going to set it to x, y, and then zero. Okay. Next thing, 
uh, we should probably add a string method. So public string to string. Um, how are we going to do this? Well, we're just going to do it in the form. If you guys remembered, the form x comma space y comma space z. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to basically return a string um, that will return um, the get x version of x plus a comma and a space plus the get y. And you guys can probably see what's going to come next. Surprise, surprise, comma and space. Then um, we're going to call upon a uh, call upon our z method here. Well, our z field here, and we'll close the uh, brackets here. Okay, and that should be that. Sorry, I was listening to a voicemail that somebody just left. I don't know what it was about though. So okay, so next thing is next. Um, public get z, return the z coordinate, get z. Um, what are we going to do? Well, we're just going to return the field z here, easy enough. Alright, progress a little further. Um, so we have the set location for the x and y. Um, we modified that here with the 2D version. Now we need to deal with the 3D version. So how are we going to do that when we pass in the x and y and z? Um, public void uh, set location. It's going to take in the end int x, int y, and int z. Um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to call in the superclasses set location method. And we're going to pass in the parameters um, x and y. Then how do we do this next part? Well, in order to get the z, we're just going to set z to uh, this.z equals z. Easy enough. And then we have a 3D uh, location pointer there. So um, the next thing we wanted to look at was um, so we've completed this, we've knocked this off the list, we've knocked off all of this, so we're now dealing with the um, distance, um, the distance um, from the origin formula here, and we want it to be an x squared, y squared plus c squared, the square root of all of that. How are we going to do that? We're going to return the type double, um, distance uh, from origin, uh, it's going to take in I don't think it needs to take in anything. I think we can just return the square root. So math.sqrt uh, of uh, if we want to get the x value from the other class, then we want to multiply it by itself. Then we want to add um, the get y, multiply it by itself. Then we want to add um, our z. So we're just going to say z.z .z because we already have access to it. Um, we don't need to call upon a specific method to get the z because we're already dealing with it in this class. And that's actually that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to start checking um, to see as to whether or not how do we compare the equivalency of these objects. Well. Um, just like reading a book in English, we will go from left to right. So we'll first check the x values, then we'll check the y, then we'll check the z's. So we're going to do this by saying we're going to return an integer value, um, compare to, um, we're going to take in another 3D object, call it other. So what do we want to do inside this? Well, if the x values, um, are not equivalent to one another, then what we want to do at this point is we want to, um, we know that we can just start comparing the values of the get x's to see which point comes first, or which point is easier to the, or which point is closer to the origin. Sorry about that. Uh, Okay, so at this point, uh, we know that the um, 
X points are not equivalent to each other. So, but what happens if we fail that test? Then we know that the X points are equal to each other. So we need to move on and we need to check the Y values. So if the Y values are not equal to each other, but the X values are, then what we want to do is we just want to return a get of Y minus the, oops, minus the other dot get of Y. And what happens if uh, the X and the Y are equal? Then at this point, we need to check the Z's. Minus other dot Z. And what happens if uh, all these tests fail and this ends up returning zero? Then we find that um, both of the points are equivalent to each other and we're just dealing with the same point. And that's it for this, that's it for this video.